everyone, Brianna here from So Cute and Quirky, and I have a tutorial for you. It's how to make a bunting, and you can make it with directional fabric or non-directional fabric, quick and easy. It's fun for holidays, for Halloween, Thanksgiving, Hanukkah, Easter, Christmas, birthdays, and they're fun to make, and they are quick and easy. You can even add also applique on there or letters. So follow me. Let's get started making our buntings, and they are so much fun, and they are super cute. So I have here a piece of fabric and this fabric is called a fat quarter and it's a fat quarter because you're using a quarter of a yard and the way it's cut they consider it a fat quarter and it's cut 21 to 22 inches long by 18 inches wide and then we can now go ahead and make our buntings from this well, I chose a non-directional fabric and with that that means that all these little candy corns are all different kinds of ways they are not in one direction only and I'm also going to show you a directional fabric with this as well so you can see how it's used and how it's cut. We are going to cut seven inch squares. You can make eight inch squares, nine inch squares, 10 inch squares, doesn't really matter, it's up to you. But we're gonna make seven, cut seven inch squares and then we're gonna go ahead and get six inch long buntings or six inch long triangles from that. And we will get six total out of this here. So when we are cutting, we are going to want to first go ahead and cut two 14 inches in length here because we're gonna get six total. So uh, we can trim this and we can use this for something else. This little extra here. And I'm left-handed, so I'm always cutting from the left side. Righties, you will cut from the other side and use your ruler. I, you see, I have a ruler. These rulers are perfect and also a rotary cutter is perfect. So you just wanna go ahead and trim that and make sure you get it all. And then we'll move that aside. We won't need this anymore, use it for another project. And now we're gonna go ahead and just trim here because I'm getting three, I want 21 inches. So 14 inch by 21 inch so that we can seven by seven squares. And here you will see, I get this little piece here. By the way, this is the salvage edge. And with the salvage edge, you don't necessarily want to use it when you're sewing. A lot of people will use them for salvage edge bags and just put them all together and they're super fun. It's stronger and this is how they hold the fabric when they're dyeing it and everything and making it. So um, it's on each end to hold the fabric. So now here we have a 21 inch by a 14 inch and we're going to want to go ahead and split that and cut down the middle seven inches. So we're gonna get two long strips here, seven inches, and cut. By the way, these candy corns are adorable, but I don't really like candy corns. They don't taste good to me, but they are really cute. Um, my mom loves these things, and she loves those little pumpkins too. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we are going to cut, subcut seven inches. So seven, 14, and then we already have the 21 there. So we're just doing two more sub cuts here with our seven inch. Cut again, hold down your ruler, move over, line it up. And you wanna use your ruler as well as the mat. And you wanna line it up here. And then we're gonna now go ahead and cut again. So we have cut all of our pieces for our bunting. And you see here now I have six seven inch squares, six seven inch squares. So I'm gonna push, put my squares together and just put these aside. And what we're gonna do with this here is now you see I've got my square. So with my square to make that triangle, we are going to take it, doesn't matter where, on a non-directional fabric. Doesn't matter where we fold it, when it's non-directional. So we will fold into a triangle. And then we can hand press and with my hand, you see I'm just pushing down a little bit and hand pressing here. And we're gonna go ahead and sew one side. So I can either sew this side here, quarter inch seam allowance, or I can sew this side here, a quarter inch seam allowance. So let's go ahead to the sewing machine and sew quarter inch seam allowance. Again, this is with non-directional fabric. So don't forget that. Take it, fold it, press with your hand. And you can also press with, with a iron if you choose to. 
Then we're going to sew a quarter inch down one side, quarter inch seam allowance here or here. So follow me to the sewing machine and let's go. I placed my bunting on my machine. I also just pinned it a little bit just to hold it in place. And we're gonna do a quarter inch seam allowance. You may wanna use a quarter inch foot or just be sure to look at your machine on the side where the quarter inch marking is. And we're gonna go ahead again on one side. So don't forget to back stitch. And let's go ahead and I'm taking out my pin. And just stitch a little bit of back stitch. And with these, you can do what's called chain piecing, and therefore I can start another one right after that, and I'll show you some of those. Have our cute little bunting and I'm going to show you how we make our final little bunting here and it is six inches long in length and if we turn it over we are going to see the seam is right here and then we got kind of like a little pocket where we tuck this little extra in there but it gives it nice stability once we put it on our little bunting line so let me move this aside and let's go ahead and grab one of the ones we just made it's open on one side and the seam is on along this side here and we have this little bit edge right here we want to trim that off but not cut into the seam just so that when we turn it that point will come out a little nicer so now before we turn it we want to now fold it over to the center like this and we can go ahead and press that seam open it just makes it nicer and flatter you don't have to do this but it does give it a nice flat look and it looks really crisp. So then we wanna just make sure and adjust and make sure that seam is centered. And we can also press this a little bit. And now we're gonna go ahead and turn it and let's turn it. And when you're turning it, you can use a chopstick, you can use a point turner tool I have a little point turner tool right here and I'm going to poke this on the inside and I'm just going to push out that point and see how it just popped that point out. So now we're going to just readjust this here and make sure that the seam is down the center and we can go ahead and press it. And then now we have our little bunting. Now we're gonna take this little extra triangle. You could trim it off if you want and you think you're gonna use it for something else, or you can just tuck it in here and then press. And you just want it to be tucked in along the edge there. And let's go ahead and press it. And it's okay to tuck it in because this here is going to be hidden by the binding or the bias tape. So that part will be hidden. And now we've got our bunting, little flags, and here's two made already. So what we can do is also do a top stitch along the edge here and here if you choose to, or not. Now let's take a look at directional fabric. Here I've got my little Halloween cupcakes and they are just so darn cute. We want them where our buntings are going to be hanging, where these are all in the upright direction. And we want them similar to this. Take one of my buntings, place it over it, and then I can have my little cupcakes facing upright once it's hung. So to do this, it's cut a little differently. You do use more fabric, but you can use the extra fabric for another project. So when we take this here, we are going to take our bunting and we want to go ahead and just turn it so that we are going to find the point. So meaning 
where we want the point, that's the center line. For instance, fold this, that's the center line here. That's where we want to find the point or the focal area of what we want cut. So if I want my bunting, let's say, I want my back to be the focal point. <laughs> I'm going to fold it. And you can look here and use your bat. I'm going to use my bat as the center as much as possible. And press it down. And for this, I use a 9 by 9 inch ruler, but because they're 7 by 7 inch squares, I want to make sure that I'm able to use that. And this goes all the way up, like I said, to 9. So 7 here. And then we also see 7 here. Because we want when we place it down where we meet. <coughs> Seven inch marking here, seven inch marking here, that'll give me a seven inch square. Now you see here I don't have enough, so I need to move it over a little more when I measure. So I'm just gonna scooch this up. And it's about, in this case, five inches folded over. You see here one, two, three, four, five, about approximately is what it would be folded over. So my bat may not be center, um, but I may look and see if I can have another little critter there. So I want to move him back some and just a tiny bit. Move him. Let's see if we can get my bat on here. And then now I'm going to go ahead and match my 7x7 seven seven bunting here. And then I'm going to go ahead and trim or rotary cutter up and over. Up and over. And that's where my center point is. And you see here, you do use more fabric, but just use it for another project. We will have a cool, cute cupcake bunting here. So now you see, we're gonna open this up. I'm gonna bring this here. I want this to be my center line where I fold it. And I would pin right here and stitch along this line, making sure that this is where the point is of my bunting. And then I can go ahead and open it up once I stitch it. I'm gonna show you right side out so you can see it here, what it looks like, just as a demonstration. And fold it out and then you see here, I'll get my little cupcakes right here and there's my point. So again, we're going to fold it. Let me get a pin. We're gonna fold it along this center line here and then we will go ahead and pin it and stitch it quarter inch seam allowance along this line, wherever your point is that you want it. So you do have to pay attention to which side you're sewing on, whereas with the non-directional you do not. So let's go to the sewing machine and we are gonna also put together our bunting now and we can make a whole bunch. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and start getting our bunting and put it together. We're going to need to put our flags along on binding. And when we put it on binding, we're basically putting it on something that it hangs on and we will stitch it onto it. So it's going to be like a string that we hang it um, or like a garland is what you wanna think of. So we would fold it over our top of our bunting or our little flags. So you're going to need a two inch wide strip of fabric by the length of the fabric, meaning when you get it cut at the store, they have the length, which is 42 inches long, you'll get the length of the fabric. On average, the buntings can be about six foot long, eight foot long. Um, so if you cut two two inch strips, you'll have enough for that and to make loops. And that's what you wanna do. So I have two here and I'm gonna make about a six foot bunting in length and once these are folded over, for instance, when we fold them, and then we're gonna fold them again, like this, on the iron, we're gonna get a half inch for our buntings and our little flags to go inside, just like that. So that's what we're gonna do here. So here, we need to put them together, and putting them together so that we can have one long six foot binding we need to do that by sewing it together. So here's an example I've already sewn here. And when you fold it, you can see now I've got one long continuous piece here. And I have put them together here. So I made a marking 
and then we'll go ahead and trim this after. So I'm going to show you what to do. So you take your fabric and you use and place the two right sides together. So put the end of one down, just like this, and then take the other end of your second strip and place it. And you want it to overlap just about a quarter inch a piece. You can use your ruler, you can eye it, but you want it to be about a quarter inch each overlap. And then what you want to do, and I'm gonna show this other one again right here, just so you can see it. So we're gonna place that right next to it there. So now we're gonna take a pen and then we're gonna go on the diagonal and mark it. And you want the diagonal that when you fold it over that it's going to give you one continu continuous strip. So then we will go ahead and mark it. And it's okay if you use a permanent pen because you're gonna be stitching here. And you, you mark from corner to corner. So I just adjusted my ruler here. And then we're gonna go ahead and pin it. And we're gonna stitch from corner to corner here. And now let's go ahead and make this bunting and I'm gonna go ahead and stitch just like you see here is what we will do. And once I've stitched it, now I'm just gonna trim it. This one's been done. And you want to trim off these little tips here. We call them little dog ears. Get rid of those there. And then we want to go ahead and press this seam open. And I'll show you on the iron. So let's go. Let's make our, our binding strip. Okay, so let's make our binding strip so we can put our little flags on it. So you see here, I pieced it. First, we're going to open this seam and press it. So we just want to open that up a little bit and press it just so it gives it a nice flat, flat face on the back. Turn it over, give that a little press there. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take and fold in our ends, fold it in about a half an inch to th three eighths to a half because we want that to be a nice finished edge. And then we'll do that with the other side. Grab the other side. Hold it in. Then we want to start and take and fold first in half. First in half, wrong sides together. Wrong side, wrong side. And let's go. in both sides but one at a time towards the center so now we take the raw edge here and fold it in towards the center and then you're gonna go ahead and press along this whole side then we're gonna do the same with the other side
take it and fold it right sides together along the fold and give it a good press. So now we're ready to put together our bunting. We have our binding made and we have our little flags made. And that binding has an opening on the inside where we're gonna go ahead and place our flags inside it. We want to go ahead and give ourselves about four inches so that we can make a loop to hang. You want that loop so you can hang it. It could be longer if you choose or shorter, it's up to you. Same with the binding. And we're gonna go ahead and take our first flag and I'm gonna put my first flag here the point is what is going to hang. So we are going to use the top portion where it's open and that's where we're going to place it. We're gonna just pop it on the inside there and then use some clips or pins to hold it in place. And then we can move along and spacing is up to you, however much spacing you want in between these. So you take your next one and then you can go ahead and open it up, place it up against the fold of the binding, fold it down, and then pin it. And you continue on with as many flags as you want and the decoration you're looking for with your flags. So also then when you're done, you're gonna go ahead and you're going to top stitch on, along the edge an eighth of an inch seam allowance along all the way across. And then you're gonna come and do that across the top too. And then you will stitch down the loop afterwards and stitch it right there so that you could stitch it down the loop. And we will go ahead over to the sewing machine. So go ahead and start picking your flags and let's go. This is gonna be fun, I can't wait.